we asked the question of these communities, or a couple of communities. So, what are the benefits of doing this? And we asked it for two reasons. First of all, in the federal government, there is no real federal department responsible for healing. And so to get community healing on the agenda of governments, it was important to show that these processes have benefits to government. We like to do that. Uh, and so we undertook a cost-benefit analysis of the Hollow Water First Nation and of the Minjikining First Nation. And first of all, you have to understand that between the federal and provincial governments, Hollow Water got gets about $230,000 a year for their healing process, which is not a substantial amount of money. Minjikining gets a bit more, but again, not substantially more. In hollow water, when you look at what they do as alternatives to the justice system, they are responsible for taking the information and giving it to the RCMP. So they do a large percentage of the investigative work. The individual who agrees to be part of the healing process takes responsibility for his or her actions. So there is no court time. Basically. They are returned to the community rather than going to federal institutions. All of which, if you look at it from a cost approach, means that for every dollar that's invested in hollow water, saves, or no, I don't want to say saves, because that implies that you can take the money from one place and put it in another. That's not what it means. For every dollar invested in hollow water, the federal and provincial government would have had to have found between eight and 11 additional dollars to service those clients that are being served by hollow water. That's a good argument for governments. Um, both hollow water and Minjikining were found to be more effective in dealing with offenders than the Western justice system. Over a 10 year period, hollow water worked with 107 offenders. The vast majority were sexual offenders. Of that group, only two recommitted an offense. So the recidivism rate was about 2%. When you look at the Correctional Service of Canada's success rate for sex offenders, the recidivism rate is somewhere between 19 and I believe 22%. So just on a numbers basis, all the water was being more effective in addressing the needs, the treatment needs of sex offenders than the Correctional Service of Canada. In Majikening, they dealt with 44 offenders, none of whom were uh, reoffended. So, just on good corrections, both communities have shown themselves to be effective alternatives to the Canadian justice system and correctional system. That's important for government. We also asked the question. Okay. Um, what, what's, your, what's the benefits that come to the community by having these healing processes? And we asked them of both communities, and surprisingly, both communities came up with very similar benefits as defined by the community. Parents were taking a more active role in the upbringing of their children. More programs were available for children more cultural programs for children, so they begin to use and relearn language and culture. Children were, not children, youth were staying in school longer. Some were actually returning to school to finish their ed education. Um, in terms of child welfare, Hall of Water had accepted 
approximately 40 kids from other communities into Hall of Water because the individuals who had to give up their children saw Hall of Water as a safe place to live and to grow up. People are moving back to the community. People who had left during the 70s and 80s are now moving back because they see it as a viable and healthy alternative to where they were living now and certainly a lot better than when they left the community. The health of both communities have improved uh, so that they now match the provincial average for life expectancy. Nutritional programs are appearing with greater frequency in both communities because they recognize that diabetes is an issue that needs to be addressed. There's no gang involvement in either community. And to date, at least last time I asked, there has been no litigation around residential schools because in both communities they felt the community themselves, themselves were dealing with it, that you didn't have to go to government to have your issues addressed, but rather it was the, the people themselves. Um, I'm sorry I didn't have more time or that I, I'm kind of nervous up here. I'd like to have spent more time speaking uh, in a more informal atmosphere. But I'd simply like to say thank you. I'd also like to say a lot of the material that we learn, we want to share with people, with other communities. And to that end, we have created something called the Aboriginal People's Collection.